Hello, this video is um, just to think about whether it's necessary to tune a concert piano or not. Um, you might say immediately, yes, of course, before a concert needs tuning. Um, but I want to think about this together because uh, this piano is immensely stable. Um, just focusing on, on the wedges here, one thing it, um, if, about this piano is it does need these wedges under. Um, so I can just check when I'm tuning it whether they're put there. Once a concert was given, and the wedges weren't there and the, the, the platform moves around like feels like you're on quicksand so that's important. The piano is actually 240 centimeters long that's seven foot ten and a half so it's a small concert grand. Now Bluth has been kind enough to provide this uh, cloth for just dusting it over um, and it's ideal for a polyester surface so the first thing Tuna can do is just to check there's no no smears on the piano um, you might say that's not very important but nobody else is going to do it so um, it is important really obviously for the player it's nice for them to get to a piano that uh, isn't smeared so uh, but obviously if it's tuning you want then that's not going to be something you want to pay just to get the piano cleaned up a bit um, but uh, useful to have this cloth and it, it would be great if all manufacturers provided them uh, because uh, you don't want to scratch polyester and this is a non-scratch scratch material. The first thing of course is to check the pitch and uh, if we just listen to the tuning fork it's about 440.5 uh, so that's fine at pitch rise and anything between 440 and 442 some orchestras got to 444 but um, we standardized this pitch between about 440 442 uh, just above 440 that, that's fine let's listen to the unisons this is before I've tuned it and really there's obviously it's very slightly out so what I'm thinking of here, there's a lot of uh, orchestras that, that come and they obviously to pay for the tuning of the piano is expensive. Does it need to be done? Well, you can't really run the risk of notes being out of tune. That's the problem. But I can assure you this particular piano is, is very, very stable. Lutner Grands are very, very stable pianos. And um, when I come to tune it, there's usually about one or two unisons that are slightly out and really listen to it now. It's been played on a concert before this. Only once this year I found it particularly out of tune and that was not having been tuned for about two months and uh, it had been played on a lot between that time. So some orchestras or some performers don't ask for it to be tuned. Obviously you're saving the tuning uh, fee there. Those obviously are uh, <laughs> gonna be unison anyway because there's only one string. Let's listen to the octaves. It can be perfected, obviously. If you're playing a solo piano, you wouldn't want to run the risk as a piano concerto of not having it tuned. But if you're perhaps just performing Christmas carols, not that you want a lesser standard in a way, but you might want to economize. This is honestly how in tune it normally is before I come to tune it. So much as I, there's a unison slightly out there. The only one that's really, really bad Otherwise, we can see all the unisons and all the octaves are pretty much in tune. They can be improved, um, and certainly I will do that when I'm here. But that's how stable I find the piano, um, even after it's been played many times, perhaps uh, for a whole month without being tuned. That's how stable the piano is. Now I shall set about getting those unisons dead in tune. So we're just going through the the octaves and unisons. If you listen to this, there's no unison to correct there. That fifth is just as it should be. And again, no unison to correct there. And so it is throughout the whole piano. But there might be one or two which I'll stop and tune. Okay, I've just found one unison. I don't know if you hear that but slightly out. Now, when you're a piano tuner, you have to decide whether it's far enough out to, because obviously when you turn the tuning pin, you destabilize it as well. So I think if you're an experienced tuner, you have to then hit it hard to make sure it is well stable. But that's now in tune. 
second unison I found, and really is so, so little out, you might decide you're going to leave it because it will destabilize slightly if I tune it. I'm going to tune it. Now it's dead in. This is the third unison I've discovered. And now it starts in tune. And the fourth one, well, that is so close. We'll put it in tune. Once I've discovered it, I can't resist doing it. Okay, that's in now. Okay, because we're going through the whole temperament area, the octaves are dead in. If the octave is just very slightly flat, this, this, they might be, might be leaving that but the octaves are absolutely in tune. So stable, Blutner pianos are renowned for being very, very stable. Both the old ones, amazingly stable, and also new ones. That octave, it's very, very slightly wide, but I'm going to leave it. It's only a question of infinitesimally wide, and it wouldn't be worth churning all three. It would destabilize it. Now going up from the temperament area, which is that area, we're now going up right to the top of the piano. And I would tune the fifth perfect, and the octave, you just slightly sharpen octaves going up to the top. So let's go through that now. That, that, that octave sounds wonderful. Let's listen to the unison. That put unison's perfect. Well, that is, you can just faintly hear something on it, but it's not worth destabilizing for that. Another unison. But perhaps I should have made a decision to leave that one as it was. Difficult to know. I think it erring on not touching the tuning pins is probably the right thing to do. Next one. Next unison. That one's in now. And another unison. I just found the first really out of tune note. I don't know if you can hear that. Hear the beating. That's better. By the way, the aliquot scaling here is on the level with the bridge. Um, it's, the string goes up so that the hammer doesn't hit it, but on the bridge it's level. That's on the modern balloon. There's obviously the old ones have. Alicot, if you look at some of the old other videos um, at Bluthner's assessments, you'll see some other Bluthner's. Another unison here. See, two of those strings are out of tune. That one as well. Let's try the Alicot. That should be very slightly sharper. The opinions vary actually on Alicot scaling, but general opinion is very slightly sharper. But really the Alicot, as tuners will tell you, doesn't make a huge difference to the piano. I'd like to hear Bluthner's comments on that. Well, Again, I'd probably leave that. No, that's slightly out. But I think I've got extra something going wrong with that.
There's also a bit of inharmonicity on the strings here, so... That's in tune now. Okay, okay having done the treble now, we're going... down towards the bass. I think we found about seven or eight unisons, which are infinitesimally out, and one near the top, which was possibly significantly out. I'd like to che check fourths and fifths here. Now that octave is slightly out. That fourth beats faster than the fifth. And that fifth, not surprisingly. So we alter that or not. Actually, when, I, when it was out of tune, um, about two, two tunings ago, it was this area here that had moved. To do with humidity, I think, partly. And not many of the unisons are out, but these octaves around here, it's quite common for this area to move, for the octaves to move. So, again, checking fourths and fifths. The fourth is stronger than the fifth, which it should be slightly. I think, again, destabilizing it wouldn't be the, uh, wouldn't be the answer. I'm very reluctant to turn tuning pins, unless it's absolutely essential. That keeps the piano much more stable if you do that. Just don't don't turn the pins and hit it hard to make sure it's um, staying in tune. So this will be the area very often moves slightly, octaves move slightly. Well there's a slight unison there. Is it worth correcting? Those two are in tune with each other, and that one's slightly out. So let's correct that one. Let's just check, actually, that those are in tune with the octave. Yes, they're fine. So the question is, did I really hit, do a service or not? Because, yeah, okay, it's in tune now, but I had to turn the tuning pin. So these, these thoughts are going through my mind all the time. And I think through the mind of any tuner who's tuning for concerts, that's that's fine. So all those octaves now, as I say, sometimes these octaves move. They're likely to move. I'm, I'm ex not surprised when they do. It's to do with humidity. It's to do with how um, I don't know the science of it really, to be honest with you, except that from experience, they do move around this area, and you do notice with changes of humidity that they'll move quite considerably. But that's not playing then, that's that, that's that slight difference in humidity. The slightly, very slightly flat here, that one. Some tuners actually prefer to make the bass slightly flat. It's more of a rumble. I tend to tune them as well on long piano like this really put reasonably perfectly. I have raised that one a bit. Slight movement there. I think that's just, you will get um, a slight imperfection on the on the copper wound strings inevitably. So you have to see basically get as in tune as you can. That's fine. So, just check the whole piano now. I'd like to have a nice listen to the top end. Fifths and octaves. Fine piano, I love this piano. 
been tuning it for a few years. It's only about five years old, six years old. It has a great purity to it. the unicorder pedal is something you can check when you're tuning as well and this one's beautifully set up the action as well the voicing they're all superb on this piano but then it's only five years old so the question I asked at the beginning is it was it worth tuning at all uh, if you've got a uh, piano concerto then obviously if you're accompanying choir uh, carols at Christmas, maybe you feel it isn't worth doing, but you run the risk of unisons being out. On this piano, I can assure you, that's a very, very low risk indeed. Thank you for listening.